Christ the Glory Sunday. We are blessed to be present today, and we hope that you are excited about what is happening in our churches and continue to pray for all the good things on this Thanksgiving weekend soon to come. I welcome you. And one important announcement is on Christmas Eve, December 24th at 7 p.m. here at the Granville Federated Church. We're having Christmas celebration, sounds, and song. And we hope that you will be present with us. And also we will be reminded of uh, COVID-19, we will have masks, and make sure that we have a social discipline. Our concerns this morning is for our congregation and for those persons in which we are continually praying for. Dottie, Mary Ann, Sally, Kimberly, George, Warner, Jim, Amy, Darcy, Barry, Doug, and Pastor Stephen the Agave School in Uganda and his wife Alice and also the life and the health of our church. And as we go into prayer let us be thankful for those on this Thanksgiving season. It is a sad occasion that many people are still losing their lives and yet at the same time it is difficult sometimes to celebrate but at the same time we serve a God that is faithful. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for the presence of these days. Give us strength and encouragement and protection in these times. Bless us as we look to the season of giving and the season of thanksgiving, as well as Christmas. Lord, we pray for those families that are not as fortunate as we are. We pray for those families in need of your grace and your mercy. Bless us and guide us and protect us. And be with the families that are traveling far away. We pray that you will bring them back home safely. Be with those with this COVID-19. Be with this pandemic that is striking our nation very hard. Lord, we ask for your blessings in your grace and mercy. And in the words in which you taught Jesus, the disciples, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will have crown him, crown him.
Ezekiel 34, verse 16 says, I will search for my lost ones that have strayed away, and I will bring them safely home. I will banish the injured and strengthen the weak, but I will destroy those who are fat and powerful. I will feed them, yes, feed them with justice. And the other verse, which I am going to close with, Matthew 35, 25, 35 through 36 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. This morning, the reading of this week's Thanksgiving celebrations need not keep us from the reality of what is spiritually and important for our needs for today. We live in a tough time, a time of grieving on this Sunday. Thanksgiving is a time of pain and suffering and prayer for this year. It is also sometimes hard to celebrate when many families are separated by this COVID-19 and the constant spread of this virus. Today, I am challenged to provide some comfort, hope, and I invite you for just a few moments to reflect on the reign of justice as we continue to pray and function despite the conditions and the circumstances of our world. In this text this morning, Ezekiel is a watchman. As stated in Ezekiel 33 and 3, when the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people. God made a promise to support and reign as a shepherd, a true shepherd. A true shepherd that it will scatter his flock. When leaders fail, we must not despair. But remember that God, if we believe that, that God is in control and that his promises to return and care for his flock is the key message. In the final message of Matthew 25, Jesus says these words, the shepherds have failed the flock. The kings failed Israel. But all is not lost. For Israel's true king and shepherd was always God himself. So those verses has a picture of God's taking care of the disappointed of human leadership and restoring the true divine kingship. Today, as we focus ourselves on what is happening in our world, the rule of God will determine three things in this text. Number one, he says, I search for the scattered flock, that he is going to feed them, and justice will prevail. What is this justice? This justice is a kind of justice that so often we don't always understand. But Jesus speaks of this, the poor and the oppressed. And in this text we find, as you go home to read it, you'll find that Ezekiel is one that is a watchman for those who need God's mercy. First, it would be an act of rescue a movement of God's kings in the ancient world as a shepherd gathers his flock together to protect them from danger. So will God will gather his people from the scattering places and see their security. We see Ezekiel in exile where, we, where he, like Jesus, on his mission to seek and to save what was lost, meaning that the lost sheep of Israel. 
Secondly, this process includes caring for them by tending their needs and providing good pasture. This hard work of the shepherd's work is connected to the way God cares for his people. And those words of David when he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the what? Still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the what? Valleys and the shadows of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, thy comforts me. In verse 16, he says, the I statement, which God has the ability to reign this justice. The lost will seek, the stray he will bring back. The injured I will bind up their wounds, and the weak I will strengthen, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. Jesus is and will reign with justice. In the context of Ezekiel, he is given encouragement to those who are in exile with expectation of restoration. Today you may feel that you are in exile, separated, this pandemic and COVID-19, relationships are being scattered, but you ought to be reminded that Christ still reigns. He reigns in each and every day in our lives, even though he's not back yet. He has not come to redeem us, but we ought to be encouraged by this period, this season of thanksgiving and Christmas and giving, even though there are those who are hurt, those who are discouraged, that as believers of Christ, we as Christ reigns with us, as justice has speaks to our need, that we are to give others in encouragement. These words are very clear. In Matthew 25, 31 to 36, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit on his righteous throne. That time has not come because when Christ comes, there will be no division. There will be no right and no left. That when he comes, he will set everything in order. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people, one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep in his right and the goats on his left. You and I are not the judge or jury or the executor. So often in life we have the answers to everything, but Christ will rule with his justice at his appointed time. Well, the king will say to those on the right, come, you are blessed by the heavenly father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And to those he will say, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Each and every day, as we feed people with the thirst of God's blessings and grace, as we sit at our tables during the Thanksgiving period, we are reminded that Jesus himself is still reigning in our lives. He says, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. There are people that are thirsty for God's power and grace and mercy. There are people that are thirsty for the love of people and persons. I was a stranger and you invited me in. We are to be neighbors with one another in these times. Yes, there are people who do not have anyone 
no one to love or to care for. Jesus said, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Yes, Christ, he reigns with his justice. His justice is not like our justice, for he is the Lord of all. He is the Lord that speaks to our needs. He is the Lord that will never turn his back on us. He is the Lord that will keep us and guide us. He is the Lord that knows every pain, every doubt, and every persecution, every hurt, every opportunity. He is the same God that is present with us today. Are you reigning with him? Are you by his side? Is he your true and Lord and Savior? That's why it's important that we as believers need to rejoice and to know that the Lord is truly his King. May God give you the spirit of thanksgiving. May he give you the spirit of love in these times. There may be someone that is hungry. There may be someone that is thirsty. There may be someone that need you today. Continue to let them know that Christ Justice still reigns. His love is very pure. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And may the peace of God be with you and the love of Christ keep you, now and evermore. Amen. Our hymn for the day is Rejoice! The Lord is King. Go in peace and serve the Lord.